What's up everybody, Hardwick Geek here. Now when it comes to the VivoBook Pro OLED 14, Asus offers you a ton of useful and cool features. This includes an OLED panel, which also means that this is the first AMD laptop we are reviewing here to feature an OLED panel. A fingerprint sensor integrated with the power button, a trackpad with a touch numeric pad and a powerful CPU-GPU combo despite its small size. So we are gonna talk about it all in this video, so stick with me until the end of this review ride. So without further ado, let's get started. And here we go. The VivoBook Pro 14 comes with a metal design. Both the lid and the base are made of aluminium. In general, the structure is solid. We can easily open it with one hand. So the weight distribution is excellent on this device. And there is little to no flex on the lid and keyboard deck. In terms of dimensions, here we are talking about a weight of 1.45 kilos and a profile of 19 millimeters. Honestly, this isn't the lightest laptop on the market, but it's in the thinnest and the lightest region on the map of performance laptops. Now, there's something interesting here. Instead of the standard logo that we see on every Asus laptop, the top of the lid houses an extrusion, well, it's of no purpose, but it does make the laptop appear professional and cool. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. Now, if you look at the keyboard, the keycaps on this device are rather large, but the key travel is not that great. Basically, the clicks are rather on the softer side. Personally, I am not a fan of these soft click keyboards that are used in most of the thin and light laptops. And the same goes with this one. However, that doesn't mean the keyboard is bad. It's actually really nice and comfortable and there is no problem with typing. Now, the one feature that really stood out to me is the power button's dual function as a fingerprint sensor. It's a great addition and makes logging into Windows incredibly quick. The arrow keys are a lot congested and small on this laptop, which makes it sometimes difficult to navigate and increases the chance of accidentally pressing the wrong key. Continuing with the studio vibes, we go to the touchpad. It's huge, it's great and it has a nice texture. The clicks are pleasant, but this trackpad only had one flaw in my opinion. It is not usually very accurate and didn't always register the clicks. Apart than that, it's quite smooth for the price. Now, if you look closely, you will see imprinting in the top right corner. Actually, it's a shortcut that enables the touch number pad and the touch is really responsive, which is another cool and useful extra feature to the laptop. Now, they have loaded the Pro 14 with a lot of ports. On the left side, you get two USB 2.0 Gen 1 Type A ports, quite unfortunate. However, on the right, there is a charging plug, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, an HDMI 1.4 connector, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port with display port output, a micro SD card slot, and an audio jack. Now, if I were going to buy this laptop for myself, micro SD card would definitely be a letdown. I'm damn sure that this laptop will appear to many content creators. Therefore, having a micro SD card slot does not seem to be a much use. Instead, this would have included a full size SD card slot. Finally, the most anticipated part that you guys must have been eagerly waiting for the display. And it's not an ordinary display. It's an OLED panel. Now, you might be wondering what makes it so unique. Well, you receive all the advantages of OLED such as deep blacks and a remarkably high contrast ratio. But you also get 100% DCI-P3 coverage with HDR True Black 500 compatibility. It is also an 14-inch 90Hz 2.8K resolution panel with a max brightness of 500 nits. Well, well, this is a lot of details for most of the people. So if I break it down in simple world, it means that the display on this device is really great. It is a very rich color reproduction really great picture quality and, and more than enough brightness, a heavenly gift for outdoor users. In other words, this display is ideal for color grading work as well as for watching high quality content. Now, the OLED panel have a major problem known as burn-in. For some of those who don't know what burn-in is, they might be wondering what hell kind of problem he is talking about. So let me make it simple for you. Burn-in occurs when a portion of an image such as taskbar, some game objects or anything static on the screen left a permanent mark on the panel, visible as a ghostly background, no matter what else is displayed on the screen. When Asus has taken the burn-in issue seriously, so they have come up with two solutions. Number one is pixel refresh, which refreshes every pixel after the screen is left idle for 30 minutes. This is just a simple screen saver. And the second one is pixel shift, which slightly shifts every pixel on the screen to avoid the burn-in issue. That shifts our studio vibes to Ryzen 7 5800H and see how it performs in real-world application. And we will start with the favorite one, Cinebench R23 Multi-Core. 
we can see that the top performer from the previous year has dropped to the mid tie. However, it still has a lot of potential due to its 8 core design, which greatly enhances its multi core performance. Even after being crushed by an i7 12700H, it still manages to outperform an Intel i9 11980HK and is only few steps behind its newer version, the 6800H. Leaving behind the multi core scores, let's see if the outcome of the single core excitus leaves in the desolate place of grief. As we can see, in the single threaded workload, Intel has a slam dunk queen. It outperforms everything in the field by a significant margin, making it a massive 26% faster than 5800H. So this round goes to Intel. Sorry 5800H fans. But wait, don't be sad guys. Looking at the price difference between both of these CPUs, we can easily say the 5800H is a beast in its own league. Now I'm not sure why, but it's actually faster than 6800H. Geekbench 5 features the same action story but with different flavored popcorns. With the 5800H receiving 7408 points in multi core results and 1416 points in single core results. Moving ahead, we have Handbrake, a video encoding benchmark that converts a 1 minute video clip to several formats. So basically, this test takes 30 to 60 minutes to complete on most modern H series chip. And here, the 5800H gives quite tough competition to i7 12700H. As a result, video conversion will be extremely fast on this laptop. However, it is outclassed by its most recent counterpart, the 6800H, and its bigger brother, the 5900HX. Blender CPU rendering is similar to handbrake result, in that the 5800H at 45W sits among the pack that includes the 6800H, 5900HX, and i7-12700H, while delivering a 25% performance gain over the Ryzen 7 4800H. That's a great generation-on-generation -generation improvement. However, in this workload, it's only able to close the existing gap between the Intel and AMD. Now let's see some Adobe Creative Suite applications to determine whether they will work well for you editing workflow or not. Surprisingly, this laptop benefits greatly from its dedicated GPU and 8-core CPU, making its way through every application you throw at it. Because it is specifically designed for thin and light machines and has a lower wattage GPU, the RTX 3050 on this device is not the same as the one you would find in any other gaming laptop. This results in improved battery life. So you can imagine what performance will it pump out. This is a great laptop for casual gaming. But avoid purchasing it if you have a picture of a gaming laptop in your head since it might not live up to your expectations. In terms of cooling, there are two heat pipes of different sizes shared between the CPU and the GPU. The larger head leads to the larger heat sink while two fans are blowing the heat away from the chassis. The temperature on this device are really fantastic if you avoid playing video games for an extended period of time, which I don't believe you will do because you seem too busy with your work to do that. But for your nerdy mind, here are the temperature while performing a stress test in three different modes. The battery in this laptop is a 63W hour pack. It was able to get around 5.5 hour of backup on video streaming, so not a huge contender in battery department. The laptop also sports a decent upgrade package, but only for the storage. Unfortunately, all of the memory is soldered to the motherboard and it's a single channel RAM module. Thankfully, Asus also supplies the laptop with up to 16 gigs of dual channel RAM. As for the storage, you get one M.2 PCI X4 slot. Now, it's time for my religious speech. I mean to say my final, really compressed, quick, faithful thoughts. So first and foremost, the most notably advantage of this laptop is undoubtedly its display. But if I had to sum it up in a single word, I would say it's simply great. Unfortunately, there are two things that I found unsettling about this machine. First, the lack of memory upgrades. Indeed, you get the option of up to 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM but you have to pay the premium for it initially, as the RAM are soldered onto the motherboard. You get options with 8GB as well, but if you are buying this laptop for professional work like content creation, you shouldn't consider the base option. Now the second is a bit more straightforward. Two of the three USB Type-A ports here are out 2.0 speeds. Yes, this segment of the market is pretty competitive and Asus has invested a lot in the display and the build quality of this device, but we would have loved seeing three proper Type-A ports. As I said, the build quality of this machine is great. It is sturdy, relatively light, and offers a premium feel. Well, that has been needs some work as it didn't always register the clicks and wasn't super precise. But I feel it has the potential. Plus the virtual numpad you get is pretty useful. Although Asus is playing a bit safe with this notebook, I actually feel pretty comfortable about it. If you are going to need it mostly for the processor plus GPU intensive works, go for this version. Otherwise, the non-graphic card one will suit you great. Of course, keep the memory situation in mind and if possible, skip the base 8GB option. So that pretty basically sums up the review of VivoBook Pro 14 OLED. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, a like would be appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.